let's take a look at our top selections. Dan Omen, Mike Beer. It's Arkansas Derby Saturday at beautiful Oaklawn. We're going to take a look at the other graded stake on the card. Race number 11 is the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Let's take a peek at this field. Some salty sprinters going three quarters of a mile. It's the rubber match between Breeders' Cup Sprint winner Whitmore, last year's Eclipse Award winner for champion sprinter, and CZ Rocket, who is second behind Whitmore in the sprint, and then turn the tables in their most recent outing here at Oakland. Yeah, I like this rubber match between these two. It feels like there's not that much between them, Dan. Um, I thought they both ran well in the hot springs off the layoff last time. It was CZ Rocket who came out on top, but it was pretty close at the end. We'll see what happens uh, the third time they meet up. Curious to see how this pace plays out. I agree with the time form U.S. pace projector that no parole is the speed of the speed. Does Mr. Jägermeister have the gas he used to have? Because if he does, he might be able to push no parole. Strike power has speed. I'm not sure he's as fast as no parole on his best day. Yeah, the pace could be key. You're right, Dan. Those two, uh, the four and the seven, are both horses who do have speed. Are they as fast as no parole? Um, I think that's a question that we'll only know the answer to when the gate opens. No parole is fast. They don't always uh, make him go that fast early, Dan. But when they do, um, he has a lot of speed. That was certainly the case the last time you ran on this track um, in that allowance race last April. They sent him that day, and he showed a lot of speed. We'll see if they ride him that way from the route. No parole won the first five sprint races, uh, first four sprint races of his career. And then he was in tough in the Jerkins and the Phoenix races where he kind of acted up a little bit in the paddock and post parade. He came off the layoff in a nice spot. This was a nice spot Tom Amos found at Delta Downs against fellow Louisiana breads. Let's watch no paroles race. He's one to 10. He takes a little bit of pressure and he draws away. You see him on his left lead. That's no parole, though. And they ran him on turf last time out. That's probably not his game. All that does is dirty up his form. He's on a send from the rail, and he's very dangerous if he can get a breather. Yeah, I hope he's on a send from the rail, Dan. That win right there isn't the most impressive thing you'll ever see, but he was just doing what he had to do um, to beat that field. Um, we'll see. I don't know if the turf to dirt is actually a good thing or not, Dan. I'm not sure why they ran him on turf last time, but it didn't work out. Um, we'll just see, you know, to me, this horse is a tough call because I, I'm willing to forgive his jerkins. I didn't think his Phoenix was as bad as maybe it might look on paper. Um, but you're still going back to a horse who was big win, that Woody Stevens. It just felt like everything came together for him that day. You know, he was in good form. He found a short field without a lot of speed. He had the rail and Sias just sent him. And it was like the perfect storm for him to run a big race and get a grade one. We'll see if he's really that good. I think it could go either way. Number two is the King of Oaklawn. Whitmore has won this race three times in the past. He just missed in the Hot Springs last time out. And while some people are disappointed whenever Whitmore loses at Oaklawn, I think that the connections have learned over the years, let's not squeeze the lemon dry. We want to wait for races like the Breeders' Cup Sprint at the end of the year and talk about the sprint. He got one of the great rides of the weekend by Arad Ortiz. He really did. Um, and, you know, when you go back in retrospect um, and look at that hot springs, maybe just a ride just made a total difference in the Breeders' Cup, considering the trip he got to the one CZ Rocket got, who was wide in the Breeders' Cup. Last time, um, it was a little bit of a different story. They were both on the outside, and CZ Rocket just followed Whitmore and gunned him down at the end. Mojo Man deserves a shot in a race like this based on his most recent performance. It was a breakthrough for him. Let's watch Mojo Man's optional claiming win. 95 buyer. They weren't going fast up front, and I like the way he was able to kick these horses down. He shows a little bit of courage going in between this tight spot. He's always been a solid horse. I've never thought of him as a graded stakes type, and he is catching a couple of real good ones. Yeah, this is a tough spot for him. I agree with you. He's a really nice horse, and you can just sort of rely on him to show up. Um, even It feels like even his best race isn't going to beat this field, Dan, but he can get a piece. I think the conventional wisdom concerning the four strike powers that he is all dressed up off of his last race, where he earned a 101 buyer speed figure. Let's watch that race right now. There was no speed in the race. They ran one, two, and he's in deep water. Hollis looks like he has him beat turning into the stretch, but strike power is able to come back and call upon his class. And he gets away from Hollis in a race where there was no closing. I have to admit early in his career, I was never a big fan of him. I do think Steve Asmussen's turned him around in his last two fast dirt races, but again, he had all the best of it in this start. 
Uh, he did. Um, I'm with you, Dan. I was never a big fan of this horse. Um, you know, even when he had him and he was running some fast races. I will say this, though. The one thing that I want to give him a small amount of credit for, because you're right, that just might have been a bad field where the speed had all the best of it. But in this horse's prior three wins, um, it was all get loose and don't face a challenge and win or have somebody look you in the eye and give it up. And this horse would always give it up when he got challenged. He did not give it up last time. And maybe, just maybe, he can sit off the one and the seven. We'll have to see if he wants to pass top quality competition and then hold off some really good closers. Empire of Gold catches a tough spot in his first start off the layoff. He was second at a huge price, however, in the Phoenix and was not embarrassed at all. As a matter of fact, I thought he ran great in the Breeders' Cup sprint on a fast pace. It'll be interesting to see what sort of trip he gets here. It'll probably be a good one. Yeah, he's going to sit right up close again. It feels like he did run pretty well in the Breeders' Cup. Um, you know, that Phoenix sort of came out of nowhere, Dan, um, in some respects, because it just felt like he didn't have the class to go with that field. But he was the one who chased down no parole on the lead before the closers came and got him. He ran well that day. Um, he ran OK in the Breeders' Cup as well. He's a real wild card in this race. We'll see if he's really that good. CZ Rocket won five in a row after being claimed by Peter Miller, then ran great one second behind Whitmore in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. And let's watch him run Whitmore down in the Hot Springs, his first start off the layoff. Whitmore makes the lead. You see CZ Rocket, who fell far behind on the backstretch, follow him. It looks like it's Whitmore's race to lose right here. CZ Rocket is determined. Yeah, this is a good win for this horse. Um, Because, again, I thought Whitmore ran well in here. Whitmore made the first move, Dan, but I don't know. I kind of feel like CZ Rocket beat him fair and square in here, just sort of runs him down at the end. It was close at the Breeders' Cup. It was close here. There's not a lot separating these two horses. Um, And it's going to be interesting to see which one goes favored. I guess it'll be Whitmore, but it won't be by a lot. Mr. Jägermeister completes the field. They ran him in the hot springs. He didn't get to the lead. He paid the price. He fell far behind CZ Rocket and Whitmore. It's his third start off a lengthy layoff. Maybe he can improve. I just wonder if he's getting a little bit long in the tooth, and he's going to be facing some quality speed in the form of no parole. Yeah, I think we look at him the same way, Dan. I mean, he's going to really need to call on his very best race to beat this field. And I just don't know if he's capable of it anymore, um, especially if he can't make the lead. Top selections in here for the grade three count fleet sprint. You have to respect the two big names coming out of the Breeders' Cup. I don't know. Strike power, I went with him. I think he's going to work out a good trip. You mentioned that he actually came back and passed a horse last time out. I need him to drift considerably. I think no parole might be the third choice in here. I have to get seven or eight to one on strike power. You think no parole can take him on a down the road speed show? I'm going to see if he can. I don't can't sit here and say I have a lot of confidence in it, Dan, but personally, I can't separate uh, the two favorites in here. I wasn't going to just pick one of those two on top. I'll try to beat him with no parole, and I'll hope that um, he gets the same ride here that he got in the Woody Stevens um, and in the race at Oakland before that, where they just send him to the lead and try to wire the field. Got to root for Whitmore. That's what the heart says. I'll take a chance with from my wallet with strike power. One, two, six, four, five for Mike. Four, one, six, two for me. It's the grade three count fleet on Arkansas Derby Saturday. Good luck.